Hello and welcome to Electric Bike Report. My name is Pete and this is the Logo FS10 electric bike in for testing and review. This is a really interesting electric bike because it almost doesn't look like an electric bike. It has a very sporty, sophisticated, and, and overall clean look to it. And you can see there's something going on here in the down tube of the frame. And this is the Fazua mid-drive system. And not only is it the mid-drive, it's the battery and the mid-drive motor that can be removed from the down tube. So this whole pack that sits in the lower part of the down tube um, can be removable. And so you're basically getting two bikes in one. You've got the electric bike as it sits here, and then you can remove the whole system uh, for a lighter uh, conventional uh, non-electric bike. It's a very interesting system. The frame itself is uh, a lot of hydroform tubing, some really cool style details and functional uh, characteristics of this bike. And uh, yeah, just a really nice assortment of accessories, uh, components, You've got the Shimano Dior drivetrain, full fenders, rack, um, carbon fiber fork, Shimano hydraulic disc brakes, uh, just a lot of really nice quality features. Uh, the bike retails for $4,999. And uh, this is a video overview, and I'll have the full review for you at electricbikereport.com. That includes a bunch of detailed pictures, specifications, ride characteristics, range test results, pros, cons, and overall thoughts. And those are all at electricbikereport.com. But with that, let's get into the details. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the details on this hydroform aluminum frame. So first of all, here you can see the solid connection of the top tube and down tube to the head tube. A lot of thick aluminum welds there and uh, just, you know, kind of cool details as the head tube has a couple different uh, sizes right there. And then similarly with the top tube, it has sort of an angular look here near the head tube. And then it uh, drops down to meet the uh, alignment of the seat stays. And when it does that, it becomes a bit flatter right there. So really interesting design element. And speaking of that, you've got sort of a red accent color. And then on the other side, it's a bit of a polished aluminum look. Um, so really uh, cool detail. And then um, coming back here, you can see the uh, top tube connecting to the seat stays there. And the seat stays have sort of a triangulated look to them. And then you've got the uh, seat tube coming up to the seat uh, post collar right there. So a lot of really cool detailing. And then dropping down here to the chain stays, there's the gussets that tie the seat stay and chain stay together. And the rear dropout that features a through axle design, so it provides a good, you know, lateral stability for the rear wheel, good uh, solid side to side stability. And uh, right here, these are the elevated chain stays that uh, run to the uh, down tube. And they also have sort of an angular look to them, um, along with kind of creating a platform here just above the bottom bracket. So uh, really cool and uh, unique design details here on the uh, FS10 frame. So one of the real big highlights of the FS10 is the Fazua mid-drive system. This is really interesting because uh, housed within this tube here that you see under the down tube is the battery pack uh, near the top as well as the mid-drive motor that attaches to the bottom bracket area. So this is not just a battery, it's the motor as well. And what's really interesting is you can remove the whole system to convert the bike to non-electric if you want to. So you can quickly add the assist or uh, remove it and have a lighter bike. So basically getting two bikes in one with this system here. And they also make a cover that uh, can attach in here so that it basically looks the same from the outside. So here at the top is a 36 volt, seven amp hour, 252 watt hour battery pack. And then down here at the lower part of the drive pack is the, um, the mid-drive motor, which is 250 watts nominal with uh, 400 watts peak power. So uh, very interesting uh, design overall. Okay, so here's a quick demonstration of removing the drive pack. Unlock it with one of the supplied keys. Push the uh, button here that's on the top of the down tube down, and then the drive pack drops out just like this. And you can see that's the bottom bracket attachment point uh, where the drive pack motor, and right here, you can see that's the attachment point for the motor that uh, provides pedal assist to the bottom bracket. So. Pretty cool design there. On the other side of the battery pack is the um, electric connection on the right side. That's also the charging port. And on the left side there is the on-off button for the battery and also shows the battery level as well. 
So reinstalling is pretty much the same in reverse. Basically just line it up there at the bottom as well as the top, click it into place, turn the key, take it and you're set to go. So here's a look at the drive pack removed from the bike and uh, you can remove the battery. I've already opened up the locking mechanism there. It's pretty easy. Just push this down and slides out. Um, but you can see that the uh, 36 volt, seven amp hour battery, that's uh, 252 watt hours, uh, takes up a little bit more than half the space in the drive pack. Um, and then you've got that 250 watt motor that's uh, right there. And then to uh, reinstall, basically the same in reverse, just slide it into the drive pack. It clicks into place there. And uh, yeah, overall, just a very clean system. So here's a look at the charger plugged into the battery there at the top of the drive pack. It takes about three and a half hours to fully charge the battery from empty. Okay, so here's a closer look at the carbon fiber fork here. And this has a lot of really interesting details. Um, the first one is the internal cable routing. The front hydraulic disc brake uh, cable is routed inside the fork leg. And then uh, it comes out right there and goes down to the front disc brake. Also, you've got a uh, through axle design for the front wheel, so provides solid side to side stability. And also some internal attachment points for the front aluminum fender. So all in all, just some nice uh, detailing for that carbon fiber fork. Okay, so let's check out the bike's drivetrain. First of all, the pedals have sort of a grip tape surface and uh, provide a ton of traction. And then the logo cranks have a, uh, an exterior chain guard to help keep the chain on the chain ring and to keep your pant legs relatively clean. And then once your pedal power and the motor power is combined, it travels back to the Shimano 10-speed cog set back here. And that's shifted through with the Shimano Dior rear derailleur. This has a clutch uh, built into it, so it helps to keep the chain relatively tight so it doesn't really bounce around much and really keeps the noise to a minimum. So it's a nice, uh, quiet and smooth uh, shifting system. So here's a look at the Shimano hydraulic disc brake here on the front, and that's a 160 millimeter rotor. The uh, brake caliper here with uh, just a closer look at, there's some cooling fins for the brake pads to keep things uh, running smoothly. And uh, these have that typical hydraulic disc brake feel, just super solid engagement and a lot of power. It's a nice match for the Logo FS10. Okay, here's a closer look at the Shimano hydraulic uh, disc brake for the back of the bike. 160 millimeter rotor, and then a closer look at that caliper there. Okay, so let's take a look at the handlebar area. And so um, on the left side here is the ergonomic grip. It has a little bit of a wing for wrist support. Also a lock-on collar to keep it uh, stable on the handlebar. The Shimano hydraulic front disc brake lever, and there's a uh, adjustment to set the brake lever reach to fit your hand size, which is really nice. This is the Fazua uh, control pad and display. There's also the smartphone app, and uh, this provides a lot of good basic information. Um, first of all, on this side here, the up and down uh, changes the pedal assist levels, and then this is the center button for the um, turning the bike on and off. And then over here is your battery level indicator. So uh, right now it's in the no assist mode, which is the white. And then uh, you go up to green, which is the first pedal assist mode, blue the second, and pink is the third and highest pedal assist mode. So three levels of pedal assist, really easy to uh, change those. And then um, also just, you know, very easy to see what pedal assist mode you're in there. So, uh, you know, you're able to quickly adjust that with your thumb here, as well as quickly see, you know, what's your battery level and what's your pedal assist level. And then the, the smartphone app provides a lot more information, a lot of the general cycle computer information. So moving to the center here, this is the Super, Supernova uh, LED headlight that uh, we'll talk a little bit more about but this is the on off button here uh, that also turns on the uh, rear light as well and then over here the uh, Shimano hydraulic disc brake lever for the rear brake the Shimano 10 speed uh, Dior shifter and then that ergonomic grip the logo saddle has a fairly narrow profile for efficient pedaling as well as a relief section there in the center to uh, provide a bit of comfort for those long days in the saddle so this is the Continental Cruise Contact Tire. It's a 28 inch by two inches wide. And uh, yeah, pretty nice tire for all around riding on the road as well as some gravel road riding. Has a pretty smooth tread patch uh, with some channeling to dissipate water. And uh, the width is pretty nice. You know, it uh, works really well for a lot of different riding conditions. And uh, there's some reflective striping on the sides to uh, help with being seen when you're out riding at night. 
So one of the accessory highlights are the Supernova LED uh, front and rear lights. And uh, these just have a nice quality look and finish. The headlight here has a nice aluminum casing and then uh, aluminum attachment point to the handlebar right in the center there. Um, it projects a nice uh, solid beam of light for uh, you know seeing well at night as well as being seen out on the road. So this is the Supernova LED tail light and uh, it's built right into the structural aluminum fender. And in fact, uh, the wire runs within the structure of the fender itself for a super clean design. So here's a closer look at the rear rack. This is an aluminum rear rack that uh, is actually attached to the structural aluminum rear fender here. So this is pretty interesting because the fender provides the horizontal support uh, you can see the rack attaches in two places here to the fender to provide that horizontal stability. And then uh, the vertical load is supported uh, down here where the rack attaches to the frame at the dropout area. So uh, just a really clean design and uh, the, um, the rack can handle bags and baskets and such on the sides and the top as well. Okay, so that's the video overview of the Logo FS10. Make sure you check out the link that's associated in the video notes that uh, will take you to the full review, and that includes a bunch of detailed pictures, specifications, ride characteristics, range test results, pros, cons, and overall thoughts, all at electricbikeport.com.